Hello, welcome to our Star Wars Force Awakens Hello. spoiler review. Yes, not that we're going to spoil it intentionally, however there will we're be gonna spoilers. We're going to talk about all the spoilers. So if you haven't seen the film, do stop watching now, please. Be- yes. <laughs> I thought you were going to keep talking and you'd like, please. So yeah, we've, yeah. we've said it. If you're going to... If you if you're spoiled by this video, it's it your own not fault. Not our fault. Because we're going to put spoilers in big capital letters in the title, and we've said it now, so we had to do it. Yes. So, did you like the film? I very much like the film, and I feel like if we're if if people have seen our regular review, they're gonna they they'll know what we think of the film already. Yeah. But we can we we can talk about it again. Exactly, and so we can go into more detail about. I think I, I want to talk a little bit more about Finn's introduction. Oh yeah, because okay. obviously when we first see Finn, he's um, you know, he's just he's coming off the ship. You kind of know it's him because of the way they set it up. Yeah, you know? and the way he acts, he acts different to the stormtroopers. Exactly, and I, I, at first I was a bit like, hmm, they made this a little bit too obvious because it, it does seem I don't know, I it was just purely because. He suddenly just decides, oh, he, he doesn't want to be a stormtrooper anymore. But you never see him as a stormtrooper, really, because you get, like, the first few minutes where, you know, he's walking around. He never kills anyone. He he just suddenly decides not to be a stormtrooper anymore. And yeah. we, we never get to see him, really, as a stormtrooper. I, th- I think um, because it's because later in the film, he mentions that he worked, he did something on the Starkiller base. But I can't remember what it was. But it wasn't what he sanitation. said it was. Sanitation. <laughs> sanitation, that was the one. Yeah, he was doing sanitation. So he has been a stormtrooper, but he was sanitation as a stormtrooper. Yeah, exactly. Rather than fighting as a stormtrooper. So when he that was his first fight, I think. I also want to... I think... I have to say, I just want to quickly get this out of the way. The most disappointing thing, I think, about the film was Captain Phasma. Oh, yeah. I was they really, really upset with that because... I was, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Gwendolyn Christie from um, Game of Thrones. She's one of my favourite characters because I, even in real life, you know, I've seen the interviews of her and I absolutely love the woman. She's amazing. Um, and I just feel like she, they bigged up her character so much saying, oh, she's not your classic, you know, Star Wars villain. She, she, you know, she has probably the best outfit I've ever seen anyone wear. And she has like two minutes of screen time and then she's just yeah. dead. I mean, we don't actually well, specifically we don't know see if her she's die, dead, but, but there's a good chance she was a good on chance board she's dead. The, she was also General Hux. Now I don't know if it's just because I've seen About Time and other films that um, his name escapes me. That that guy Donald is Gleason. In. Yeah, yeah, that he played um, Donald Gleason. Yeah, I just could not get scared by him. Yeah, yeah, he's, I know what you mean. He's supposed but, like, to be scary, and I just wasn't, couldn't get it. It wasn't because. It was Donald Gleeson, though, because I didn't think when I saw him, I didn't immediately go, oh, that's Donald Gleeson. I thought, like, I still thought to myself, that is, that's a general on a, on a Star Destroyer or whatever, because mm. he did, he looked the part. He did look the part. I think sometimes the way he spoke was really weird, and that's what made me not take him seriously, but the rest of it, like, everything else about him I loved. Yeah, it's just, that, I lo- that scene where he's given the speech, that was great. Oh my did god! A really yeah. good job there. I mean, that was insane. That, that was really cool. I mean, to go back to the plot, of we, you know, I just spoke quickly about Finn. We can talk more about that in a bit. But the plot was it too much like a New Hope? I don't think it was too much like it. Although when I got home, my my parents went to see it last night as well, and uh, my granddad went with them. And my granddad obviously saw it, saw a New Hope in the in the cinemas with, and my dad saw it in the cinema as well. But he, my dad was obviously a child. My granddad wasn't a child. Um, nope, because that my granddad... would be weird, folks. <laughs> uh, um, my um, my granddad thought that it was too similar, but and he's like he's a very casual viewer. He still loves Star Wars, but he's more of a casual viewer than we are. He yeah. thought it was a bit bit too much of a rehash, but I I didn't think so. I thought they did it well. Yeah, I thought it was. Um... It was it was funny because as soon as you see Starkiller Base, you you know you are just a bit like oh, 
it's it's just a Death Star. But they but, reference that in the film. Yeah, exactly. But, but they, they're like they, they're about, like this is the Death Star. <laughs> you think about what they could have done differently, really, because uh, I mean, in the original films, they set. I mean, they could have they couldn't have gone anything less than the Death Star because the Death Star itself was such a big and impressive thing that they couldn't in this film go. Oh, we're going to attack this, you know, this shed which is housing military <laughs> ammunition. You know, they they have to get bigger than the Death Star because yeah. they've already, you know, they I think you know, the Death Star in itself is is a huge thing and you can't you can't then go up less than that. You yeah, you have to step it up. And, and I think a planet is probably the next step up. I thought I thought that was it was really cool that they it was built into a planet and that it absorbed stars. Which is why it's called... I thought they just called it Starkiller Base because obviously Luke's original name was going to be Luke Starkiller. I mean, that that was... I think that was why they called it that. It but then I think they, thought, they sort of used that and made it so it did actually kill stars. Yeah. And it's clever. But, like, it, it's believable, which I think is great. You know, you think, yeah. oh, that's probably quite, quite impressive. And I thought it was cool because we've never seen that sort of technology. I'm like, I'm... I'm using quotation marks here. <laughs> um they we've never seen that sort of technology in um in Star Wars, like the the ability to absorb stars and like everything went dark when, when it finished absorbing the star and stuff. Yeah. Um I mean that, that was a long fifteen minutes, I do have to say. <laughs> but to be fair. But they do it in all films. It's a so, star. You know, I was just like, you know what, I can forgive it for that. Yeah. Um, and Speaking of the the Starkiller base, they destroyed the planet that the New Republic was on. Yeah, that and, was so. And I was strange. like, I was like, wait, so the New Republic's gone? Like, it wasn't just the planet the, the, they the destroyed, though. It was the whole system. They destroyed yeah. like five planets. I was just, yeah, thinking, what I think the that was the fuck. That, that was a good step up from the Death Star, though. Yeah, like, but I mean, th- we were talking about this in the car, and I think the problem was they didn't they didn't raise the stakes. You never felt anything for the New Republic because you never saw it. Yeah, but again, like again, like in a New Hope, you you never saw Alderaan. So... That's true, but you had ties because you knew Princess Leia was from it, and you you see her reaction to the fact that yeah, they're destroying the homeworld, which which gives it emotion. Whereas with, I cannot remember the name of the planet that the New Republic is on now, or the system. No, it's not. I it's think not it's, Coruscant. Um, it's something else. I can't. Remember. It looked like Coruscant because it was a city, but it's all in the expanded. The new yeah. expanded universe and the new canon. Well, and stuff. It was in the new expanded universe. It's now floating around space. <laughs> but as it was, I think, in the new canon, they they formed, they formed the new republic quite soon after the Battle of Endor. Yeah, pretty much straight away. Yeah. And and that, so it had been going thirty years. It's just it's we just, never really I mean, knew about never it. Really, you, it never really felt like the Starkiller base was. Was similar because the Death Star when I think in the original when they made the Death Star it really did have the feel of oh my god this thing is ridiculous like oh my god they're about to destroy a planet what is happening oh no no and, you know you kind of a bit worried about the Death Star you're like oh shit they 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 really need to destroy this thing yeah and then and then I think with Starkiller Base I think they destroy a pla- they destroy that system so early on that you kind of think oh well fuck it that thing is just ridiculous no yeah and you know, I th- I feel like if if like maybe I don't know a character that we knew was on that planet, or or like I don't know, we if we started with with the Republic or part or the whole Republic if wasn't there. If you just seen it, apart from that three second long shot of them going ah and then blowing up, I think if we just had a little bit more screen time on that planet, I think we would have been a bit like oh they, and we never really know what the New Republic did. We n- we don't know who they are. We we don't know anything about them. All we know is they funded the resistance. That's and it. When we're not going to get a film about it now. And it was like in the prequels, we got we got too much Republic and too much Senate. And this time around, we got none of it. And it made and it, we were just like, OK, they're dead. Brilliant. Great. Yeah, now what do we so do? now now what? <laughs> like, yeah. They're, they're now the resistance, which I think was being funded by. Yeah, because the Republic, the, because in the new canon, the new Republic demilitarized themselves. Yeah. But in secret, they start funding the resistance, who are obviously a military organization. Um, yeah. Which is the, probably the one thing most people will be confused about when before going to the film and think, "Oh, why? If there's a new republic, is there also a resistance? What What I is think, happening?" 
I think the resistance is to combat the, yeah, the first it's, it's order. To do it without the New Republics being seemingly in a war. Yeah. Which I think is a bit odd because I think they, they do make the first order. There is no sort of, you know, sugarcoating the first order in the film. They are, they are definitely the baddies. They are, every character knows they're the baddies, which doesn't really play into the fact that the New Republic won't be open to fighting them. Because surely if they're, you know, they, they are formed from the last remnants of the Empire, yeah. surely the New Republic should send their last fleet to fuck them up. But they don't. They just, they go, oh no, we'll fund the resistance. And I do have to say yeah. though, probably the most epic scene in that is when they're on um, Mos Kanata's home world and they get attacked by the First Order and then the, the, um, the resistance oh, come and you know yeah pose the X-wings like flying along the um, yeah along the river that was that was really the cool. goosebumps were they were in full effect there that was an amazing yeah. scene and I like, have to say I thought it was it was really cool um, that they had it was a new and like because we don't know if Ray is a solo or a Skywalker like there's we don't know anything she, she could be that's but, probably like, the only mystery left really they do tie yeah. up a lot but we um, we just left wondering who Ray is. And like we knew, we I knew that someone had to be related to Luke or Han or Leia because, or or Luke, Luke or Leia really. Yeah, because, because obviously they're because the Star Wars, sensitive. the Star Wars saga is is a, about the Skywalkers and um, Kathleen Ray, Kennedy said Luke that, Skywalker's that, daughter. We like we don't know, but I, I, I like think there's a good that, chance it is. I like that even if she's not, we like Kylo Ren is a Sky. Skywalker slash Solo, yeah. Like it's just like it was. It, it was nice and it was different, and uh, it was heart wrenching as well. Yeah, because and I, I want to know more about um about like how he turned to the dark side. I want to learn more about the Knights of Ren. I want to learn more about Luke teaching them. What and then and then he turned and then. Oh. What I will say is that that scene where. Kylo Ren and Han Solo are on the bridge. I have to say that was probably one of the most powerful scenes in the film, purely by the way it was acted. Because oh, like Adam Han Driver. Solo was he he very much was a dad in that scene. Yeah, like he went like, from I... being this smuggler with smuggler, this smuggler <laughs> with um <laughs> Han Solo the smuggler. <laughs> he went from being a smuggler, you know, this this sassy smuggler with all these one liners, to being. An actual dad in despair, you know, at what he's yeah. suddenly become. And it was and, really powerful. And I liked that they weren't just the same characters again. Like, Leia was different and Han was different. They like, were grown up. They, yeah, they'd grown up. It, like, you could sit, you could tell that they were the characters we, characters we loved, but 30 years later. Mm. And they definitely changed. Han, not so much because he'd gone back to smuggling. But when he got, when he then saw Leia again... And stuff like that. He he became this new character, and he had so much more depth to him as well, mm. which I I just loved it. Like, and Kylo Ren's name is Ben. Yeah, that, like oh. you didn't catch that it was like because Ben and Ben. Well, Kenobi I was very much like in the moment at that point. You know, I mean, it comes yeah. at a time when you, I was thinking, "Oh my God, Han Solo is going to die." You when know. he when he shouts Ben, like that's when I was like. He, the a, way he a, does it, he dad. acts it fucking brilliantly. Yeah. He's like, you know, I'm not going to do it, but you, you can you can hear the pain in his voice, and it is, it is incredible. Like, it's a really touching moment. Yeah. And um, what isn't a touching moment is when the twat Kylo Ren rams his lightsaber through Han. That isn't a touching moment. That is more of a but, wow, you like, fucking bastard. Like, there was no better way to what? to make you hate this bad guy. No. Oh my god. I, but I think it. You kind of know it's coming. Yeah, like but there's no way around it. I mean, you know it's coming because because we we love this character so much. You just it hurt you don't just as much because we knew it. Like, the build up to it actually hurt more. I mm. think, and there is sort of a moment where you think, oh, actually, is Kylo Ren gonna turn? Gonna turn back but then, to the But then I guess uh, at the same time, I think I don't want him to because I do love this villain and I don't want him to only get half a movie. I yeah. don't want him to be the Mandarin from but... Iron Man Three. You know? <laughs> I, I, yeah, but he was not going to turn around and be like, actually, I'm, I'm just an actor. An actor. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and then I, 
when he goes to give him his lightsaber, I think, oh my god, he really is. He's doing it. And then obviously when when it has that shot where they're struggling, I thought, oh, this is it. He's gonna just turn it on, and the whole thing's gone. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's. I think he says a line something like, "Oh, thank you for helping me," or something like that. Like, "Oh, can you help me do something?" And I was yeah. like, "Oh, it's gonna be, can you help me kill you so that I don't have to feel this anymore?" Yeah. And then like, that shot where it has Leia, just she, you know, she sense, you know, obviously she's force sensitive as well. You know, she kind of feels it. Yeah, it was like yeah, because yeah, she is force sensitive. That and, is a um, really, really. It's it's a really emotional scene, and I, and. You know, I did actually think at the, towards the end that I thought Kylo Ren was dead. I, <clears throat> I have to say, yeah. I did think they had killed him off. I, when, I, uh, I, if they killed him, I don't know what I would have done. They... No, because I actually felt uh, my heart sank more when I thought Kylo Ren was dead to when <laughs> I thought like, Han I Solo had him, dead. But, I want to see him being a dick more. <laughs> yeah, because I thought this is such a good villain. Like, yeah, villains are so typical these days. They're just bad. You know, you just oh, they're going to kill yeah. people. But and Kylo Ren has so much more to him that you sort of want to know. And I guess you sort of want to want him to come back to the good side, and I want to see Leia slap the shit out of him. Oh, I don't think he's, he's ever coming to back no, to the good I side think now. He's I think it. it was such so different from Darth Vader turning to the light in Return of the Jedi because mm. he was like he he had this turmoil, like, but um, it wasn't like Luke making Darth Vader turn to the light side. Yeah, it was. Han trying to make trying to make him turn, but really he was using Han to 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 like get rid of this like the um what's it called uh turmoil um yeah oh uh I can't think of the word um this conflict in conflict yeah that's the word he was trying um, to, he, he had this conflict resolve his conf- his in, yeah. in, in his inner conflict but his inner conflict was to be a bad guy like it was like i don't want to be good rather than darth vader wanting to be good and it's too late for him yeah he he really wanted to be a bad he, he wanted to be a bad guy and by killing han it just like it just that's it he's bad now he's and i a bad think guy. i think it's his reaction to killing han that is so it's so emotionally harrowing because he is happy about it you can see the relief on his face not the pain, the relief. And it's just like, fuck you, Kylo. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> like, th- throw yourself off that fucking bridge, you prick. Like, also don't, because you're a good villain. But Yeah, exactly. I mean, also, we have to talk about Supreme Leader Snoke. Yeah. Is like, he Darth Plagueis? I know you have some that, strong that, opinions on that. There's that here. theory that he, he's Darth Plagueis. I don't think he is anymore. I have to agree. I don't think he is. I think... But, but like... Is he this massive guy, or no, was, or is no. he normal size and a projection? I think it's just a projection. I don't. He think... was a projection. It's we, weird that, that the projection confirmed. isn't blue as well. Yeah, this is the first projection in Star Wars that actually looks like a person. I think. Yeah. Maybe. Well, like, I guess the technology is developed and stuff, but yeah. I really don't want to see if we see any more holograms and stuff. I don't want them to be realistic. I want them to be blue. Yeah, I know. It's, it's like, such a really nostalgia hope, trip, isn't it? Like, that's why I'm a little worried about that. Because uh, the blue holograms, just that, that is a Star Wars thing. Mm. Um, but do, also, do you think he needed to be CGI, though? I don't think he needed to. Like, in the... Um, in in all the marketing and stuff, Andy Serkis said, this guy needs to be CGI. Like, you couldn't have done it this with prosthetics. Which is why everyone thought he was going to be, like, some sort of, like, like reptile creature or something yeah, really or odd, like, but... He or like, or just... like Darth Plagueis, because because yeah. in an interview, Andy Serkis <clears throat> said that he had a long facial structure and he was tall and stuff, and that is like that is Darth Plagueis. He has a long face, right? So everyone thought that he would be Darth Plagueis, and there were so many theories that he could have been. Like there was so much possibility. But I I feel like Supreme Leader Snoke is a great opportunity to introduce a new character. You know? They, oh yeah. Because all these, I mean, I know Darth Plagueis has never been in it, but he's always been mentioned. And I feel like this is a good opportunity to keep moving forward with the franchise and to keep introducing new mm-hmm. characters and yeah, and stop relying so heavily on what happened. Yeah, I, I want to go back to that CG thing because <clears throat> really, you could have had an actor and then you could have used CG to make like his his one of his ears was funny. He had some scars and stuff. Yeah, he had and a they big, could have used CG to do that. Head, but, they could have know. used CG to do that rather than making a whole CG character. And it was clear that he was a CG character. If you know what I mean, like to yeah. me, it was clear. 
Because it, I think maybe it's it was the hologram effect or something, but maybe it's because I knew that he, he was a CG real, character. Did he? Like, I think that it comes down to when he, the, given how big he is, I think when you scale a CG character up that big, they tend to not look as realistic anymore. Yeah, like, but like Maz Kanata, she looked really good as a CG character, but then she still seemed like a CG character. Yeah, you could which, still kind of feel... It still felt a bit weird, didn't it? it wasn't and quite... it was only because... I mentioned this in our <clears throat> non-spoiler review. Uh, it was because... Because everything else was looked so real. Everything was, was yeah. real. The whole That whole canteen, or whatever that... Not canteen, bar that she ran. Um, that was... Every character in that was... Every monster, every creature, they were all people in suits and puppets and stuff. Yeah, and exactly. that's why it made it so obvious that she was CG, but which you do, really got to me a bit. You see some of these ridiculous char- like, like, m- character models that they have and these puppets and stuff, and it does make you wonder how they didn't manage to do it for Supreme Leader Snoke and for... Um, yeah. And for... And for Mos Kanata, because they... They are quite ridiculous, some of these things that they have, and... How they weren't quite able to bring that over to to some of the other characters is a bit mm-hmm. strange. But I guess some of the puppets, like, I I had a bit of a problem with the Admiral Akbar one. <clears throat> yeah, I was just about to mention that, actually. Because the mouth just killed it for me. Be- yeah, because um, that's what he was like in Return of the Jedi. And I think they obviously wanted to keep it like that. But, but it wasn't believable. But the rest of the... The it rest made of the me go, film was so believable it, that it made that me didn't go, fit. It stuck out like a sore thumb. It made know. me just think, like, why are you here? Even though I love Ab- Admiral Akbar, he is the character. Why was he not on board a fucking fleet, by the way? What is he doing down there? Yeah, I, I thought Admiral Akbar would be part of the Republic. Like, so I, I thought he'd be part of the Republic. But he like, is. Um, in the new canon, he is the leader of the Republic fleet. The only Republic fleet. So why is he there? I don't know. At least that's what I read. Obviously, maybe who wrote that was wrong, but... Maybe, I don't know. But it, I'm sure it's... Obviously, but this was wrote before... Written... Wrote, written... Before the film came out, so, you know... Maybe, it, yeah. Maybe. The thing is, 30 years. It's a, long a lot of fucking thing. time. It's a lot of time. And I don't know how old Admiral Akbar is, because he actually appeared in uh, the Clone Wars TV series. Mm. He is an old fucker. He is. <laughs> How old he's is this guy? On a bit. I mean, he's approaching Yoda type age. Yeah, and you know? like, how old do Mon Calamari live for? <laughs> I don't know. Like, and like, I know uh, and Wookiees live for like 400 years. I just realised that his creature name has Calamari in it, and that is, that Did is you not quite know funny. That? No, that is he's quite a, funny. He's a Mon Calamari. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That has just got you. I can't believe you didn't know that. Ah, oh, you know, I'm. I'm I'm not quite in tune with my Mon Calamaris. Clearly not. No. With your Mon Calamaris? Just, oh, oh, man. The quicker we move on from that, the better. Yeah. Um, I feel like this isn't really a review. It's more of a discussion. It is a discussion because, I mean, the film is going to be different for everyone. You know, it's. I mean, our review is we loved it, basically. Yeah, because we we're, we're Star Wars fans. There's no true, way true. we wouldn't have liked it, I don't think. No. Because... Unless Jar Jar Binks had been Supreme Leader Snoke, I don't think. I think that's the only way I could have disliked that film. <laughs> Me said the Supreme Leader. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, uh, but like, even if that happened, I probably would have loved it. Like in a different way, it would have been like, oh, this is a comedy series now. <laughs> but like, Where's even the ben prequels. Stiller and Adam Sandler. When I was younger, I was the prequels were new. But when I, when we were young, yeah, and that made so like the prequels still like they just like they uh they're they just still like, suck. They still suck, but like they, they suck in a like. But they still there's so much nostalgia there for some reason for yeah. me. And I still like, watch them. Exactly, like I I don't watch them really anymore, but I watch them with commentary and stuff like that. Like I find new commentaries that people have done. Mm. Uh, and stuff like that and it makes them really enjoyable but and and some parts of the prequels really get me and it's really weird because i know that they're bad and that's why i would have liked this film even if it was bad yeah i think but it's, it it's, wasn't it's bad. always good because it has the word star wars attached to it but, exactly 
you like, know, it, it's not a bad film. It is a really great film. The bit thing is, if if the pre the difference is if the prequels weren't called Star Wars, they no one would have seen them. No, they would have been terrible. This films. film, if it wasn't called Star Wars, everyone would see it because it's, it's a good film. That's a, a really good, good point, actually. It's still a good film without being a Star Wars film. Yeah, it's and got it everything. Star Wars film. Like it's got. Sometimes I think it has too much because I think they try to throw too much into it, which is why the pacing yeah. I think is a little bit off and, at times. But... And the problem, the problem was it was too short, and they had thirty years worth of lore yeah. to talk about. I don't and... think I've ever said that about film it being too short. I've always said films are too long. But I, I really do think I, I, I would have so happily, and I think a lot of people would have so happily sat for another half an hour of that film. Oh yeah, because like when I was watching the film, I was thinking, like it was only I looked, I looked at my phone uh, to check the time to see how far through we were. We were only an hour through, but yeah. I was thinking I thought that we'd been sitting there for ages because the film was just like I was thinking it was so just, much had happened, so much had happened, and I'd taken in so much, and I was thinking like, oh no, the film's going to end soon. And it, we were only halfway through it. Mm. And I was like, yes! <laughs> and then by the end of the film, like I, I was like, no! Don't end! Yeah, it's one of those things where you, you know the ending is quite obvious when it's coming. Yeah. Um, but it was just... You still have a desire to just... What, you wanted to carry on. You know? It was a really... I thought the ending, that, that shot at the end was just... It was just like... I don't know. It was one of the best ending shots of Star Wars, I think. Yeah, it it was a, it because was a it real wasn't trip down memory lane, and it wasn't just it wasn't just like a, like a new hope where that was the end, like where it, they, they had the award ceremony, and that could have been it. It was like, what's next? Yeah, and it's just like now I don't want. I mean, we 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 would have had to wait three years for Empire Strikes Back after A New Hope, but we only have we, to wait uh, a year and a bit. We, a year and a half we had to wait yeah. and we have another film in the middle of that it's just but, so I much mean, Star Wars I'm going to sound a bit like your year 10 English teachers where they talk about the meaning behind <laughs> the blue curtains in <laughs> Sally's house but I do feel like that last <laughs> the shot blue curtains in Sally's house yeah and how they represent her depression when really oh, yeah. they're just fucking blue curtains I remember um, this but I do feel like that last shot was really just the the coming together of the old and the new. You know, that's kind of how it felt. It felt like you got the original trilogy, you got, you got Luke there, and then you got Ray, and they really have that kind of... It's quite a touching moment, even though there's, there's no void, there's no dialogue, there's nothing, and you can just... There is so much I feel like power in that, you know, 30-second scene. Luke knew that she was coming. Yeah, because like, he, he, he clearly knew in the Force and stuff that she was coming, and... You obviously thought, all oh, right, I better look cool. I better stand on the edge of this cliff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> better, put um, this, better put this but, cloak on. Yeah, with his cloak on. He looked so cool. He did I look thought. pretty cool. He looked and pretty. He, he looked like a granddad. He was nice. That, 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 I like that his robes weren't like dark brown. Like it was like, like Obi-Wan's and stuff. It was like a light color. Mm. Like the, the actual cloak itself with the hood. That looked really cool. I wasn't sure about the really white robes underneath. By the way, another point. This is more of a question. Um, did they? Uh, did did um, Ray destroy Kylo Ren's lightsaber? I don't think at so. the end of the film because she was like shoving it into the dirt, wasn't she? And then she sort of did some move where it seemed to hit his lightsaber because it turned it off like straight away. And I then maybe she, she like, just struck him off. in the face with it. But I think I, maybe but, she just turned it off. Yeah, I couldn't really tell. And then obviously convenience comes in and the the ground splits, and I was like, oh, okay. yeah. It definitely felt bigger than than another than other Star Wars films that we've had. Yeah, and I, I just want to talk about the lightsaber jewels in it because they were different. They were very different. They were very different. The, the style of fighting was quite different from that. I mean, it was it was more the style of fighting was definitely more in touch with the originals than it was. And it was with more the real as well, and I yeah. I really liked them. I I did as well. I thought like, they were really gritty. Like they were in, they were walking through like. It was sort of like a narrow, rocky bit or something, and um, instead of jumping like up the rocks to they the just, top, they were or just whatever, running. Yeah. She, like Ray, like she did some parkour and she she like climbed up. Yeah, instead like, of doing some stupid double jump, and it was just yeah, like, instead oh. of doing a force jump or whatever. Yeah, and it, and Kylo Ren, he climbed up, he climbed up slowly, and it was just really cool. And yeah. it wasn't like the prequels, but that's why like the, 
the light, the lightsaber battles were really cool, and I can't wait to see them again. But when I first saw it, I I thought, is that it? Because I was like, I'd watched the prequels, and I was just like, oh my god, they're doing flips and stuff. But that was so unrealistic. But in my head, I was thinking they should be like that. Yeah, because they, they are shouldn't. pretty epic, aren't they? In the prequels. Yeah, I mean, they do go on too long, and they are oh, a bit gotcha. overdone. Like, but they're so they, they're so fast. Yeah, and they're so like they they they're quite the spectacle, but I don't think they were quite like that in this film. But yeah, then I'm again, glad I'm glad they weren't like that as well. No, because... and again, Ray has never used a lightsaber in her life, but she's used a melee weapon before. Yeah, which, which is, is why she, gets she could skill. fight. Yeah, unlike John Boyega, who gets absolutely fucked. Mm-hmm. You know? I really want because because you used the staff before. I really want her to have like a double bladed lightsaber. Yeah, I, I'm hoping in the next film, like she goes, she would have made one. Screw the Sky- Skywalker legacy lights, Skywalker, the Skywalker lightsaber. I'm gonna make my own. Yeah, and she makes like, a double, like a, you know, like a classic Darth Maul, but blue or green. Oh, I think blue. I think blue would be cool. And then, and then Luke could have both his lightsabers. He could have like, or he could keep the legacy, the 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 um Excalibur. <laughs> Oh as God. lots of people call it. Um, he could keep that, but not use it, and then he'll have his green lightsaber, because that is a cool lightsaber. I actually was... One point about the film, I was really worried about how... Because I, I knew they find the lightsaber, obviously, because you see it in the trailers. Yeah. I was really worried about how they're going to find it. And then when when Daisy Ridley just started walking... I say, I say Daisy Ridley. Uh, when Ray just started walking down the stairs in the bar, I was a bit like, oh, no, this is going to be one of those really, like... Yeah, she, she just, just happens sort of... to look in the right box. But then when you learn out she's actually full sensitive, it makes yeah. so much sense because the lightsaber is it yeah, it, it was it cooling to her, to her yeah. in a way. Because she was and I think a lot of people I was on Reddit and a lot of people were saying, uh, what how did the force awaken? I don't get it. And it wasn't that the force itself awakened, it was that it awakened in her. Yeah, ex- exactly. That and that was the point, is that she realised she was force sensitive yeah. and actually quite powerful because that that shot where um the lightsaber's in the in the snow, and I I called this mm-hmm. before it happened. I was like, oh, he's gonna go to force pull it to him, but she's gonna force pull it to her instead, you know. And then it happens because Kylo Ren's trying to get it, but yeah, but it's like, stopping him. What I didn't understand was Kylo Ren was so powerful, but she like, he could hold people. You he know? could hold people with the force, which we've never seen before. No. Not even Darth Vader used used that. Um. But then he couldn't get it out of the snow. But that's because that's because I think they're supposed to they're setting up that Ray is more powerful than he is. Right, and I guess the reason he couldn't the it. reason he couldn't get it out of the snow is because Ray was doing it as well. Right, that was the okay. thing. Ray was trying to pull it towards her, so he, she was stopping it. But then when he eventually gets it out of the snow, she manages to grab it before he does. Yeah, you know that and, that that was the because she also managed to resist him, doesn't she? When he's trying to, you know. When he gets inside her head, she also yeah. manages. Yeah, I, lo- I love that. Um, they sort of read each other's thoughts. Yeah, and just... then she was like, "Like you, you know that you'll never be as powerful as Darth Vader or something." And then he just like loses his shit. He goes fucking mental. Yeah, and Oscar, uh, not Oscar Isaac. What am I about? Adam Driver's performance was just so good. Like when he was when we when he was with Han and he killed Han. Like before, well, before that, he he was like. He he was like he, you could see in his face he didn't have to say anything, like everything you wanted to know about him and what yeah. he, how he was feeling it was just there you didn't he didn't have to say anything he just he he made that that scene and also how you know how how Han like you know starts touching his face before he dies and stuff like it's really loving and then Chewie just made that scene he oh goes my god Chewie crazy I thought Chewie was a bit of a baby in this film. But he like, always has been a baby, but, though. But, but, like, he was more so, which was he weird, because so he's 30 funny. years older. I loved, older. Him. I I loved, loved him. him. And I loved that, um, the, the banter he had with Han as well. Like, I can't remember what he said. Um, oh, yeah, he said, he, he he just made a noise, and Han was like, you're cold? Oh, like, yeah. That, like, you're that cold? Was <laughs> that was so good. Uh, <laughs> but, that was anyway, so funny. we must conclude. What would you give it out of 10? I'm gonna give it a nine. Okay, I'm gonna to have to agree with you. I'll give it a nine. Or what? What? What in your mind stops it from being a ten? Some of the, some of the funny CG. I think a lot um, of the convenience of the some co- of the scenes where it's like they, you know, it's got that classic characters bumping into each other on a literal 
planet-sized space station. Yeah. It's like, but come on. Actually, no, saying that about the CG, like, we got to remember that Star Wars has, like, the original films have some moments like that as well. Yeah, they do. They do. They really do. Yeah. Um, But, like, maybe, maybe I, m- I might go down to an 8.5. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, I would not go down to an eight. No, but eight point five or nine out of ten, and it makes it's because of there just some things that I thought was wrong with the film. Like every film has its problems. These these were not Star Wars problems. Yeah, I don't think I will ever give a film a ten out of ten. No, but I like, think a nine that is a good number. So eight point five from Sam, nine from me. There yeah. we have it. There's our spoiler review slash discussion. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you made it to the end. Uh, if you did make it to the end, because we want to know, because like we have people commenting on our videos a lot, but not on our new videos. And I really want to know if you made it to the end and what you thought of what we said, because uh, I want to I, I want to talk to everyone about this film now. If you've seen the film, I want to talk to you. Yeah. So please just tell us in the comments or whatever. That would be great. Thanks for watching. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Remember to subscribe and all that that shit. (laughs) See you later. I will not fight you. (laughs) I know there's good in you.